exciting adventure in outer space with Scott McCloud, Space Angel, in the story of Dragonfire. What have you got, Dad? I don't know, Chris. I was just monitoring the Neptune space lane, and I picked up this blip. It must be a stray asteroid. It's not moving fast enough for a ship. And there's a freighter from Neptune approaching this area. Let's check with him. Neptune 451, this is Evening Star. Come in, please. This is Neptune 451. What's up, Professor Mays? We picked up an unidentified object in your area. Do you have it on your scope? Yes, we have, Professor. It looks like an asteroid. Would you check its speed and direction so we can chart its course? Yes, sir. Will do. Neptune 451, out. What's up, Professor? Good morning, Scott. Taurus. We've got an unidentified blip. Neptune freighter is going to check it out for us. Evening, Star. This is Neptune 451. Go ahead, Neptune. Professor, we have a visual on your UFO. It's a spaceship drifting free. Can't raise anyone aboard by radio. Does it have any markings, Neptune? No, sir, no markings. The design of the ship is not familiar either. Do you want us to board it, sir? They better stay clear, Professor. No, Neptune, that's a job for the Space Force. Proceed on your normal run. And thanks. I guess you'd better go check it out, Scott. Right, Professor. Meanwhile, check Master Control and see if there are any ships missing. Where the tube for blast off? In gang. Go here. Aye, Skipper. Launch control. We're ready for countdown. Roger, Starduster. Control ready and counting. Reactors go. Umbilical go. Cabin pressure go. Tube doors opening. Angle of blast. Two, three, zero. Vector four. Correcting angle. Trajectory, go. AB temperature, One. go. Increasing Five. power. Starduster here. Go ahead, Professor. Scott, Master Control has no ships missing or overdue. Then the ship's not from our solar system. Apparently not, and that's why you must be very careful, Scott. Even if the ship isn't manned, it could contain bacteria or organisms that we humans can't cope with. Right, Professor. We'll take every precaution. And keep me posted. Will do, sir. Starduster out. I've spotted it, Skipper. Dead ahead. 200 Astra Leagues. I've never seen a ship like it. The hull is sure scorched. It must have been burned by heavy atmosphere friction. There doesn't appear to be any life on board. I thought I knew every spacecraft design in the galaxy. But I've never seen that one before. The instruments show no mechanical systems operating aboard it. Well, I guess I better get over there and check it out. Maybe I better go with you, Skipper. No, Taurus. You'd better stand by the controls. Aye, aye. Keep your intercom line open. I will, Chris. Head for home. Stand by for turn. Not too sharp, Skipper. The Starduster heads back for the evening star, carrying the mysterious spaceship. Well, now, let's see what our analysis has told us so far. 
Number one, the ship was manned and built by people very much like ourselves. But where did it come from, Dad? From its position when we first saw it and its direction of drift, I'd say from one of the moons around Prometheus. Take a look at the solar map. We know the conditions there could sustain life, especially the third moon. Our spectroscope indicates atmosphere similar to Earth. The carbon analysis showed the ship to be about four years old. At the speed it was drifting, it would have taken about that long to get here. What about the ship's recorder, Professor? Any word on that yet? Not yet. The space intelligence boys on Earth are working on it. I hope it'll tell us what happened to that ship. Well, let's check with the chief. Maybe they've got something by now. Yes, Mace, I was just going to call you. The space intelligence boy just gave me a translation of the tape that wasn't burned in the ship's recorder. Frankly, it's got to stop. Listen to this. Plus 150. Second stage dropping away. Escape velocity achieved. Plus two. Afraid all is lost. Dragons closing fast. Dragon fire. Dragon? Dragon fire? You mean some kind of monster burned that ship? Could be, Chris. Professor, do you have any idea where the ship is from? We believe it's from one of the moons of Prometheus. Scott, you better get out there and check on this. If there is some kind of monster out there, we'd better know about it. Okay, Chief. We'll blast off immediately. Good luck. Out here. now, Prometheus and her four moons. Taurus, check him on the viewscope. First one's dead. No atmosphere. Looks like a big burned rock. The spectrometer registers an atmosphere on the third moon. Aye, that's it, all right. The third moon of Prometheus. Well, gang, let's go down and do some dragon hunting. Are there really dragons on this strange planet? Don't miss the next exciting episode of Space Angels! Blast off for another exciting adventure in outer space with Scott McCloud, Space Angel, in the story of Dragon fire. Last time, Scott, Taurus, and Crystal brought the mysterious spaceship back to the evening star for study. And the tape recorder from the mystery ship related a story of dragons and dragon fire. The Starduster blasted off for Prometheus and the third moon. I'll switch on the belly viewer. Looks peaceful enough. How's it read, Chris? Gravity point nine. The atmosphere is almost like Earth. Sure doesn't look like dragon country. We'll go down for a closer look. Look there, Skipper. What do you make of that? It's inhabited, all right. Civilization is well advanced, but looks like it's seen better days. Look, half that city has been burned out. Aye, there's been big trouble down there, and recently, too. That's right. I have a feeling it isn't over yet. Keep your eyes open. Uh oh, we got company. Six o'clock low. Coming in fast. Looks like a big dragonfly. Stand by the blast. I'll try to shake it. He's still closing fast, Skipper. I've got him zero. Hold steady, Taurus. Blast him. Caught him, Skipper. We slew a dragon. Good shooting, Taurus. Keep your eyes open. There may be more. So that's the answer. Ships made up to look like dragons. But why, Scott? I don't know. Maybe to terrorize the people of this planet. Skipper.
Skipper, more dragons at six o'clock high. Maybe we can outrun them. How are we doing, Doris? Not so good. They had too much speed when we spotted them. They're starting to attack. We're going down on the deck. Check the damage. Chris, you get the Space Force. Injectors were blasted away. I can replace them in a couple of hours, Skipper. That's if the Dragon ships don't spot us. The cover is pretty good here, Taurus. I'd say we have a better than even chance. Skipper, look over there. A surface vehicle. Can this be friend or enemy? And will the Dragon ships spot the crippled Starduster on the ground? Don't miss the next exciting episode of... Space Angel! Blast off for another exciting adventure in outer space with Scott McCloud, Space Angel, in the story of Dragonfire. Last time, Scott, Taurus, and Crystal in the Starduster were attacked by dragon ships while on their way to the third moon of the planet Prometheus. Although the attackers were defeated, the Starduster was hit and made an emergency landing. As they were repairing the ship, a mysterious surface craft approached. Chris, stand by the blaster. We've got company. They seem friendly. Do you understand our language? Yes, I speak the language of the outer worlds. It is the language of our Anthenian conquerors. So, the Anthenians were behind this. We knew you were friends. We saw you battle the Anthenian dragon ships. Why are the Anthenians here? Our planet is rich with vegetation. Theirs is not. So, they take most of our harvest. When first they came, we tried to fight them off. We were not so advanced in rocketry and weapons of destruction. They soon destroyed our capacity to resist. We found the ship you sent out for help. That's why we're here. Then our prayers have been answered. If you have more fighting ships as great as this one, we may be free again. There are more ships on the way, but we must know the strength and disposition of their forces. There are perhaps 20 dragon ships in the great hollow mountains beyond the capital city. That must be the city we flew over. Fine. Now let's get our ship repaired, and in the air. Aye, if those dragon ships got us on the ground, we'd be helpless. We will help you. Scott, dragon ships approaching at 3 o'clock. Dragon ship coming this way. Probably searching for us. I guess they didn't spot us. Milo, can your people gather tree branches and cover our ship? Yes, of course. We can do that very quickly. Chris. Is a space force on the way? Yes, Scott. O'Hara on the way with his group from Neptune. Find out how many ships he's got and get their ETA. Will do. Space Force 7, this is the Starduster. Come in, please. Shoot. 
your address, we got 12 chicks. Be there in five space periods. Can you give us a rendezvous point? We are in sector 47 beyond the city. We'll give you a homing signal when you reach orbital approach, if we're still here. If not, you have your target. Good luck. Same to you, lass. Out here. trucks out of here. Very fast, got to look like Mira. Listen. Another dragon ship. You didn't spot us through the camouflage. So far, our luck's holding. How much longer, Taurus? Won't be long now. But I don't see how we'll ever get off the ground with all those dragon ships searching for us. We'll stay undercover till O'Hara gets here. He can cover us on liftoff. Aye, good old O'Hara. We're all set. Nothing to do now but wait for O'Hara. Here he is now. Starduster, this is Space Force 7. We're in orbital approach. Give us your homing signal. Signal on. And O'Hara, move in fast. The Dragon ships could pick up our signal as well as you can. All right, we'll do. Out here. O'Hara's coming in now. Right. Taurus, give Bevo the signal to clear the camouflage and stand by to the lift. Here we go, gang. be blasted on the ground by the dragon ships before it can lift off. Don't miss the next exciting episode of Space Angel. Blast off for another exciting adventure in outer space with Scott McCloud. Space Angel in the story of Dragon fire. Last time, while on the ground making repairs on the Starduster, Scott, Taurus, and Crystal were informed by Belo, the leader of the Moon People, that the Warring Anthinians had terrorized his people with dragon ships in order to steal food from them. Meantime, Captain O'Hara and his Space Force fighters arrived on the scene ready to do battle. As Scott prepared to take off, the Dragon ships located the Starduster and came in for the kill. Good luck, my friends. Thanks, O'Hara. Ah, uh, that was just a warm-up. Now show us the big game. Will do, O'Hara. Follow me. stations stand by for attack split up lads and pick your dragons
That's three for me, O'Hara. What's holding you back? Why, you're nothing but a lucky amateur, Taurus. Watch this cushion shot. Aha! Right in the dragon's mouth. The dragons are through, Scott. They're running away. So I see, O'Hara. I'm trying to contact the flight leader. Dragon leader. This is Space Force leader. Come in. Space Force. This is Dragon Leader. Cease fire. We surrender. You will land your ships at the capital city runway. Yes, sir. We will comply. Out. You will return to Anthinia and tell your leader that your conquest of this planet is ended. If Anthinia needs the products of this planet, they will buy them through the established channels. This planet will remain under the protection of the Interplanetary Space Force. Very well. We have no choice but to comply with your instructions. Thank you, my friend. I am sorry you must leave us. O'Hara and his squadron will stay to enforce the peace, Bilo. Well, Taurus, looks like you have to go back to work. While I remain here and enjoy the hospitality of these fine people. O'Hara, oh, you always get the soft duty. It won't be much fun, Taurus. No more dragons to hunt. And so ends the story of Dragon Fire. Don't miss the next exciting adventure in outer space with Scott McCloud, Space Angel.